we've got crazy debate about the new skill by Krebus. I've never heard of Krebus. I'm not sure who this is, but this looks like a pretty interesting video. I love debates about the new skill. My opinion on the new skill, you guys should know very well. And um, going in, make sure just if I can get a quick volume check. I apologize for any lag. Telstra's not been in the best of moods with me this morning. I've got a new internet plan coming next Monday. So hopefully we're all good on that front. But yeah, let me know how the volume is. Crazy debate about the new skill, and then we're going to give our take and react to what we think um, is a good take and a bad take. Good luck. You know, there is a saying in Russian that goes like this. You this man is Russian. I didn't know they had RuneScape in Russia. Cool. Okay. He's, he's, what the fuck did he just say? In Russian that goes like this. Which translates to the snail is coming, but who knows when it arrives. There is a new skill coming to Otskuronskip, but when, nobody knows. That being said, only one week after the ball has passed with whopping 81% yes votes. I just want to um, reiterate, guys. Remember, humble flex right here. I predicted 81%. I predicted it would be an 81% vote. We got 80.9%. I then want to follow up with saying that was actually mentioned on Reddit. Someone said, wow, King Condor got it right. 81%. What a prediction. You know what? I was expecting a, wow, that's pretty cool. He predicted that. But that thread where someone was just, you know, I guess bragging about me getting it right, followed by 14 people saying King Condor is a knob. He's an asshole. Fuck that guy. It hurt. You voted no? Well, if you voted yes, I would have been, you know, my answer probably would have been, well, the result probably would have been even closer to my guess. Whopping 81% yes votes, there is a heavy debate going on what the new skill should look like. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with agility training. 80 is GZ. as far as I'm gonna go. GZ you see, this is the definition of insanity. You do over 1,000 laps of the same rooftop course and you watch numbers go up. That's not... Yep. A Agility is easily, my, in my opinion, the worst skill to train in the game. A lot of people will say, well, it's not because you've got the Hallowed Sepulchre. The thing about the Hallowed Sepulchre is, is it's, it doesn't really become worth your time until 80 to agility and doesn't really become profitable and absolutely worth doing until 90 to agility. No, that's not an excuse. A good skill, and I swear, if we're going to get equivalent of rooftops for the new skill, there's going to be actual riots, N not just in Falador. Okay, yep. birdhouse run, herb run, and then we do content. Let's do this. Oh god, everything reminds me of her. Where the hell is... <laughs> okay, let's talk about the new skill. I have some hot takes myself, and let's see what the internet thinks of good. this, because boy, it's getting spicy out there. We're going to live, we're going to laugh. We're gonna cry, mostly cry because it's Oskur Runescape, but here we go. So, we passed the ball, meaning the players of Oskur Runescape are ready for something big. I think Settle is right once again in that this does actually change everything. After this skill comes out, the Oskur Runescape you signed up for years ago is never gonna be the same. Now, you could argue well, that, that I think it's already hitting it. there, but the point oh, still no. stands. So, I mean, that, that kind of happens regardless of that being a skill, right? New quests, new areas, the whole of Karend new bosses, raids, the game is never going to be the same again. I mean, the game hasn't been the same since TOA came out. You know, there's whole new metas and new ways to do a lot of the content, new PBs and new methods to be able to um, achieve. Like the combat the combat tasks, for example, are so much easier now to be done because you have things like Light Bearers and Fangs and, and Tomb and Shadows. Before TOA came out, Nightmare was worth grinding. Mage wasn't so strong. It was a pretty useless attack style it still kind of is but having the shadow definitely makes it nicer so it's not really every time something big comes out like new prey books coming out soon it's going to change everything forestry is probably going to change a lot of things too it's going to change a lot of things for me because what i'm going to do with forestry is i'm going to have you guys come to my stream and you can make campfires around where i am so that i can start benefiting from the forestry and then i can just leave and you guys can sit there and you know, there'll be some idiots here in the chat that'll do that because that's the perks of, of having, an, having a, a community. 
If there were no updates, the game would get boring after a while. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, that's why live live um, update games are good, but that's pretty much every game these days. If the game doesn't get updates, it just dies. You just keep updating a game until the player base dies instead. Can't wait to get my hands on some good wood. Ooh, I, I fucking bet, dude. That It will probably be the single biggest update we have ever seen in this game, which means the pressure is on Jagex to get it right. Luckily, they have us and we'll do all the hard work for them because we have too much free time. All Jagex has to do is implement those ideas. Now, what are those ideas? That's if they're well, good some ideas. Some are bad, some are not even worth talking about and some might work, depending on how much love we give those ideas in near future. Let's talk about the bad ones first, which by the way includes sailing as well, yes, but sailing we'll is get into skill. that later, yes. I promise. Oh, aren't you the best, Amoche? Amoche, I hope that's how you pronounce. Thank you for the kind words. I promise you, I promise you this isn't scripted, okay? <laughs> Now, Jagex had a crazy idea that the people who are max cape can keep that even after the new skill no, comes out. No, no. If you are maxed, okay, if you've got a max cape and a new skill comes out, you can keep the cape. You can't use it. You can't wear it. Just like the quest cape when a new quest comes out. I don't care. You're going to have six plus months to prepare yourself for this mentally. You're going to have all the money you need to be able to buy the fastest method if that's possible with this new skill. It is ridiculous that people with max capes feel like they're entitled to still use the max cape even if a new skill comes out. Absolutely not. Go grind it, get the skill done. Otherwise, you're going to completely eliminate the... Uh, the you, you're going to completely kill off a... a sizable market for the new skill you want people to actually level and train it people aren't going to need to max it if they have a max cape if people max the new skill and then get the max cape like there's no value in, in, in being maxed if you don't even need to level the skill if, if i'm one if i'm total level 2276 when the new skill comes out do i have to get the, the skill max or do i just need to get that last agility level then i get the cape I would hate that for Grandmaster Helm. It happens with Grandmaster Helm. They release a new raid, you get new tasks, you have to do them before you can put the Zuck Helm back on. Before you can use your, your Grandmaster perks. It happens. You should not keep the Max Cape. No. Get ready to grind. Get ready to grind. Which I think is the most dumbest Thank overthinking, you. Yes. complicated idea I've ever seen. Why? Why? So what, does it say? what if we introduce a grace period where max players can return their status for a period of time after the skill launches? Yes, the grace period should be the 45 minute countdown before the uh, the update is implemented. Uh, what if we made the existing max cape represent the current 23 skills and made a trimmed max cape for maxing any skills after this point? No, you should make it a trimmed max cape, make it a completionist cape to go along with the collection log, I reckon. Just, Just... No one's done the collection log yet. Yeah, just do that. Or something like um, something like a completionist cape. Uh, what if we kept the status quo? I don't know what that means. And mandated that everyone would have to re-earn their max Yeah, make it everyone has to re-earn their max cape. 100%. Just like quest cape, just like Zark Helm. No, no questions asked. Worked thousands of hours to get the cape and now suddenly you don't have time to put extra hundred hours for one more skill. I don't get that mentality. Like if I was maxed, wouldn't it be the most amazing thing ever to try out something actually new instead of doing the same thing over and over again? And if you are maxed, look my man, I understand if you like being tied down. It's almost 2023. It's absolutely okay if you're hey, in 2023. A lot of people like being tied down, let's be honest. But I think most people with max caves are looking forward to a new skill. I think the I think it, it's it's kind of like the whole um this is kind of a controversial uh comparison, but it's like the people who are worried about the whole max cape thing and, and complaining about oh max cape is not gonna want it, max cape this, max cape that are people who don't have max capes. I'm sorry if the internet keeps lagging. It is. It I keep losing frames apparently. I'm follow I apologize if that's happening. That's really annoying. Sorry guys. I do I do apologize. I really do. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I think most people who are worried about the max cape are not max capers. Into that kind of thing. 
but we have to get over the gatekeeping conundrum in this game. The idea that everyone else has to suffer as much as you did is the most absurd backwards thinking you can come up with. Yep. If you can max out 23 skills, what's stopping you from doing one more? And if we start comparing here, you have to implement the same thing for quests now, because quest point cape is the same. A yep. new quest comes out, you have to complete it to reclaim the cape. That's how it worked in the original game, and that's how it should keep working now. Game developers should never ever cater new quest to the comes most out next hardcore week, boys. players. That's how you so drive away your cape. core audience. The hardcore part should come as an extra package. If anything, they should cater to the other 95% who work, who have kids, friends, social life, which I know is an alien concept to some of you but trust me there are people out there who enjoy the weekends believe it or not i was blown away as well what do you mean you don't spend 30 hours on the weekend doing great three or skilling it's weird oh Sit. i just get absolutely what? fucking shit on okay okay you know it's just one of those days so that's the first dumb idea I've seen. Please don't do this. Let's not make arbitrary rules for every situation. It doesn't have Terrible to be idea. like this. Fuck we already Jesus. have things in place. The second dumb idea I've seen is the overall thought that people don't think things through before yep. they type those things out. Yep. Everyone's ideas are so convoluted. Yep. All the skills we have in Otskurunskep are really simple. I like this guy. I like this guy. Jesus, my... Bandwidth is shitting this bed. Hey, holy crap. I'm sorry, guys. Give me a sec to let my internet catch up. That is so frustrating. Are we good? We good, yeah? I can't see a thing. We gotta be good, right? Yeah? hope so. Sorry, guys. Um, I like what this guy has to say. He, he's on the right. He's on the right track. By design, and that's what makes them old school. That's what makes them endless. That's why you make new accounts and do it again. Because even though we say how bad mining or how useless fire making is, you still make a new account and you still go to Winter Dot and you still get the mining outfit. Now, I'm not saying let's bring mining 2 or fire making 2 into old school runescape, but there is some core beauty in those skills no matter how much we hate them. And you could say that core beauty is simplicity, not making things so complicated. Now, on the opposite side, it has made me realize how outdated our skills are on the current market. 90% of the skills we currently have would never pass a ball today, so it's hard to fit in a new skill that fills the same team but also feels refreshing and isn't clicking a single square for 200 hours. Instead, I want to click multiple squares. <laughs> I've seen a lot of talks about selling. In fact, there is an 18 page selling in-depth rework on the front page of Reddit right now. What the fuck is that? I've seen a lot of talks about selling. What? How have I never seen that? Does has anyone seen that before? Let me let me find this shit real quick. That is some serious work. Two thousand seven scape, yeah. Why is it so zoomed in? Jesus. Surely it's somewhere somewhere close up the top, right? Could I just search selling? Has anyone seen this before? Are you able to find provide me with a link? Because I would love to take a look at this. I would love to check it out. It looks incredible. All the ideas. Well, this is just one person's idea, is it not? Or are these all different ideas? It looks like it's the same person based on the theme of it. Two found seven skate, that's crazy. Yeah, he's going to explain them. All of these? Yeah, but I'd like to look at it myself personally too. I just need to... I kind of want to find it and, and have a look. Here we go. In-depth rework of sailing. 18 pages. Holy guacamole. 
There's your pages right there, boys. My word, we should we should have a look at this sometime. This looks incredible. I'd love to go through that with you guys later. One hundred percent. If anyone's interested and keen. Jeez. Also, uh, check out check out the name right right there. Check it out. In fact, there is an 18 page sailing in-depth rework on the front page of Reddit right now that ties so deep, no pun intended, into this skill. And I guarantee you from the bottom of my heart, if I learned anything from playing this version of the game for nine years and the original version for another eight years, Jagex can't live up to the expectations. So even though it's a great I, idea, I don't know it, about that. I, I, I would not fucking say that at all, to be honest. I think the old school team lives up to the expectations of, of old school RuneScape quite well. Personally, I don't think they do a bad job at, at moderating and developing this game. I like, uh, to be honest, over the past, I've played this game since it came out, since the release of old school RuneScape. I can't think of a single update they've done where I've gone, I wish they didn't do that. That needs to be removed. That was bad for the game. It needs to be rolled back. There's a few updates where I've been like, eh, I don't really care. Not for me. Not sure if I like it. It's not content I use. But there's never been an update where I've gone, that has fundamentally ruined the game. That has actually been bad for the game. Things like Winter Todd's original drop table, Zora's and Vorkast's original drop table are, are questionably bad for the economy. They're not the smartest moves. But they're not, they're not game breaking. They don't make me, you know, wish they didn't bring it into the game. They could have been done better, but it's... Like, so? Community is overreacting, crybabies? Yeah, I, 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 I think we have a great mod team, and I think, especially Mod Ash, which everyone will shit on the Jag Jagex and stuff, and then praise Mod Ash for being a god. He is. They do a good, t they do a good job. Compare OSRS team to other game franchises and what they do, they're probably the best in the, for the community. 100%. Jagex does a great job. The old school team does a great job at developing this game. They might not do everything you like. A lot of PKs don't enjoy what they've done with the wilderness and the way PvP works. But guess what? That's not their fault. That's that's like if you know anything about MMOs and know anything about PvP in MMO RPG games, it's borderline impossible to balance, especially with the way that it works in RuneScape, where you lose all of your hard-earned gear if you if you go to the wilderness and you die with your you know hundred mil setup, you lose a hundred mil. But you can't just keep that and reward the PK with 100 mil because then you print money into the game. It is not possible. They're, they've been having quite a few victories compared to fellas. 100%, yeah, they've had rollbacks. But what game hasn't? Rollbacks, rollbacks suck. The QA team, you know, is, is, is not doing... They've had periods where they've not done the best job. But it happens, man. It happens. Not everyone's perfect. But I think they've done a great job developing this game. I think they can absolutely and do live up to the expectations. I think everything they've done so far has been excellent. There's definitely some things with TOA I don't like, but I think the raid itself was a great success. It, it was the most active the community's been almost ever. Wish they did something with Zami Boss. Like what? Zami Boss is great. You just need to get good. It is so complex that it doesn't naturally fit in into the ecosystem we have in place so it's kind of pointless to even go in depth if we know we can't implement those stuff it's like using mosquito repellent in december you don't have to do that why don't we start uh, you're doing you're doing australia mosquito repellent is crucial trust me i walk outside this morning it's january the 6th i'm butt ass naked well i got underwear on i go to feed the duck i have Thousands of mosquitoes all over me. You, you need repellent in December. Or like the other 23 skills we have in place and see where it goes. So the next time you come up with an idea, really think it through in your head. Go through the steps and actually analyze if it goes with the core values of the game, which is make it simple and make it repeatable and endless. Okay, since we're already talking about sailing, why not go over it briefly since this is the most discussed skill so far. And let's talk about a few other ideas that the community has come up with, like druidic skills, like animal handling, archaeology, adventuring, and then I'll give you my POV of the situation. Cool. So, sailing. Let's As go. I said, there was an in-depth guide that was 18 pages long talking about sailing the and how it boys. works. The first thing I noticed was how much information was gathered 
for the skill and all of it seemed to be related to other skills than sailing itself which made me realize how do you even train sailing i mean so the before we get into this because i know exactly what i'm going to say already looking at this you guys know my stance on sailing you guys know what i've said i'm going to say it again later once we go through this in case what is shown here and what's said changes my mind but my opinion on what i think sailing should be which is what it looks like it's going to be my my what I think sailing should be, in my opinion, is the best so far that I've seen in the community. And that is that it shouldn't be a skill. But I'll explain why once we figure out what's going on here. The entire point is to travel across Kilenor and find islands, find caves, monsters, loot, resources, etc. Right. But now once looking through all of these ideas, I noticed the way to conveniently train your skill to 99. There is no actual training methods. At that point, it might as well be another minigame. Now, we should never agree on training method being just constructing ships over and over again, like you train construction right now, where you build the same goddamn table 10,000 times and suddenly you're a master of this skill. That's just an awful training method. At the start of the video, you saw me completing over 1,000 rooftop laps. If well, we, I if mean, okay, I understand that. Building, uh, building thousands of tables over and over again, eventually you get 99 construction, or running rooftops, eventually you get 99 agility, but so is firing a million arrows, eventually you're gonna get 99 range, right? Or you swing your sword a, a thousand times, you get 99 attack. You cast a spell a million times, you get 99 mage. It's the fundamental of 99% of the skills of this game, really, let's be honest. It's, it's, you, you have to be a little more open-minded than just, you're building tables for six hours straight. You're shooting arrows for 12 hours straight, at a slower XP rate than, than building tables. It's just more fun when you're doing combat because you feel rewarded when you get good drops, when you also do Slayer. But let's, let's be honest, the only really standout skills outside of it are, I guess, Slayer um, and farming. I think the farming is a great foundation for a new skill. I don't know how it could be implemented, but a skill where there's that many different ways to train it with that provide uh, numerous, uh, numerous ways to, to gather resources or, or earn XP regardless of being Iron Man or a main account, I think farming is, is a great fundamental. As much as I dislike farming as a skill, it is fundamentally a solid skill that can be leveled fast or slow, actively or inactively, and you can gain money from it. And you can gather resources for farming through various different methods. What if selling was like Slayer, where it's made from other skills, but you train it with master, tasks from masters? I will let you know what I think after he goes through with sailing. But I, I, I think the whole, you've got to build tables to be good at construction or rooftops for agility is completely pointless when you've got to make, you know, you, you've, got, you've got to make 10,000 uh, 10, or, or 100,000 super attack potions to get from 98 to 99 herb law. Like, it's, it's the same no matter what skill you're looking at, really. Ever see something like this for a new skill, it's actually doomed. I feel like it lacks any control right now. You want to add engineering to it, you want to add construction to it, resource skills, maybe add PVM elements to sailing, managing ports and so on and so on. It's just too much for one skill. It needs a single direction and I just don't think players are going to be happy about that. You want your cake and you want to eat it too. That being said, I do like the idea of combining multiple skills into one. I think that's a good way to salvage a lot of the dead skills. And overall, the most ambitious thing all RuneScape players are searching for is value. If you do add sailing or some other skill, I think you better make sure you add at least all the resource skills into the new one to a point where training them one by one is still more efficient. But you can go out on a voyage and train mining, fishing. No, fetching, Tyler, it's my internet. Maybe even Sorry. Slayer or agility. It's my now, internet. Th that is good value. And you know what else is good value? Supporting Krivos <laughs> in Patreon because you get good content for the rest of your life. Imagine. I call that value. Link is in the description. The Wazing oh. Laugh is perfect. Also, I would genuinely love to know what new skill you would like to see in the game. Let me know in the comments and we can see what people come up with. I ain't going to let you know in the comments. I'm going to let you know right here. All right? I'm going to live react to, to what I think. Let's just talk about sailing for a second. Okay. Now. If I show you what I saw back here, look at this. Uh, this whole tab, look at this, a tab for your boat next to you. What, what, is, what is there currently? That would be like, instead of your equipment tab, you'd have your boat tab, right? And you can change it between boat and equipment or whatever, all right? What you should do instead, which I've explained numerous times, but for those who haven't seen it yet, is have a tab like this, or like this, 
Let me kill this damn worm quickly. Sailing should not be a skill, but it should be in the game because I think it is smart, I think it is fun, and I think if this is too much information to be a skill, then make it, make it its own concept. Make a tab for sailing, have yourself different tasks up here, different islands, different objectives, different whatever you want to do. Boats, land, ocean, bosses, dungeons, whatever. And just have your own progression like you have here with Corrand. Have your own sailing tab, make it ports, make it sailing, whatever you want, but keep it out of the skills. Don't make it a skill, make it its own content. Make it its own, uh, like, like just its own feature in the game. Implement it into the game because it looks like great content. Sailing looks good and everyone wants sailing. But don't make it a skill because if you make it a skill, one, it has room to fail because people are expecting the skill to fail or people are putting pressure on the skill has to be good or it will fail. If you don't make it a skill, sailing can't fail. It doesn't become mandatory. You don't have to do it to max. If you don't like sailing, guess what? You don't have to do it. Ports are a thing in... Um, a good example is in World of Warcraft. I think ports and sailing, like the idea of sailing is actually in World of Warcraft. And it sucks because you have to do it to be able to progress in the game through certain storylines. You don't have to do it in, in old school RuneScape. You don't have to, like, you don't... It doesn't feel like a burden, right? People don't like training current favor, but you've got to do it for the skill. It sucks because you've got to do it. I don't like Winter Todd. I don't have to fucking do Winter Todd. It's up to me if I want to. I can just go burn logs instead. How about a skill where, you, where you're from Sydney, your account gets auto-deleted? You are hilarious. You're a funny person. So I think sailing can be in the game, not as a skill. I think sailing as a skill is what will make it fail. I think sailing should be its own thing. It can have its own log. It can have its own tasks. It can have its own objectives. It can be its own... My internet is garbage, you know? When it, when it, when it picks back up. Any second now. Are we good? Telstra? Sorry guys again, yeah, my, yeah, the internet is shocking today. I don't know if we're going to get into the inferno today at this rate. It will back into the inferno. Fuck off! Jesus, I apologize for the lag. Um, the video shouldn't be this bad, hopefully. Hopefully the video doesn't have any issues at all. It's just me complaining about a smooth 1080p service. Um, but I think sailing should come to the game in its own way. It should not be a skill, and that's that. And I don't think there is a better, there's a better solution to it, and I haven't seen anyone suggest a better method to sailing. That is the truth. If you can, if you can come up with a better idea for sailing than that, let me know, but you can't. Not a single person out there can and will. It won't happen. Everyone wants it to be a skill. They're not using their brain. It's that simple. If you, I'm convinced if you want sailing to be a skill, you're either not very bright or you're, you're just being selfish about what you want. You need to think about it from a, 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 big, a wider point of view. A larger point of view? A, a more... You need to think about it with your brain, essentially. Making it a skill is a bad idea. If you make it a skill, it'll either not be enough or it'll be too much. But if you make it its own thing, it, is, it has unlimited potential beyond the, the cap of 99. And you can just ignore it if you don't want to do it. An in-depth guide that was... Eight that, that's, that's my opinion. Let's go back to here. Another idea I've seen people come up with is player-owned farms. Or I guess peacekeeping, ranching, breeding. People have a lot of different names for this. But the idea is pretty similar to what we already have in the original game. In RuneScape 3. Essentially, you obtain eggs or babies of animals. Incubate those eggs until they hatch. Build your own animal pens. You have to take care of the animals. You can wait longer and get more resources. Or harvest immediately and get different resources. You can add different rarities to eggs like dragon eggs are super rare but you can get your own black dragon hides if you grow a dragon from baby egg to full sized one and so on. Now in RuneScape 3 they have it as an add-on for the farming skill and in a sense it's really great for Iron Man because you have another method of gathering 
free sources like herd blood secondaries and so on. The problem I've seen with this is however the fact that it gets very limited and it doesn't have a lot of options for expanding besides adding just new creatures in. Also we have to think about a skill that works for literally every single player whether you are level 21 noob with 200 total level or you are maxed main account. Funny thing is JX actually wanted to add this into the game. In fact they had an entire concept thrown out when I am um, I've, I've actually seen this this um feature very slightly in rs3 when i when i played a little bit of rs3 um with jay a couple of years ago um so i never got too in depth to it but it's not a bad concept to be honest i think it does sound a little bit too close to just putting it on farming would be the easiest way to do it if this could stop lagging i'm so sorry about the internet guys this is a joke um not a terrible addition to, to farming in RS3. Yeah, I agree. Not sure it'd be good a standalone though. No, because I feel like it, it could. It feels too small to be standalone. Are you? Is it really lagging again? We can't seriously be losing frames. Really? Or is that my internet not keeping up? Okay, no, it's my internet not keeping up. I'm sorry. It's my download. Okay. Um. Because the idea of like, you know, Zora scales, dragon stuff, mole parts, um, it, it seems very Iron Man focused, um, but I think the concept sounds like it's something I could go with farming. Yeah, no, sorry, I, I realized so it, it's just my computer being garbage. I apologize for, for spurging out mid, mid, <laughs> mid video. Um, so... Yeah, I think the, 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 the idea of livestock sounds like it, it's... I mean, again, you need to see what's pitched, but this, this concept, this idea so far, what's been shown here, sounds like it'd be better for like a farming add-on than it would be for like its own standalone thing. But it's not a bad idea at all. If it can be well-balanced, like Zora Scales, it's still like more efficient to farm Zora than it is to uh, farm <laughs> livestock Zora, then that's good because you still want the boss to be relevant. Uh, why would you harvest roots from a mole? I think it would be like you, you put... Uh, I don't know, because moles are underground and you can get roots from underground because you're under the under the under the uh what's it called? Under the Falador Garden. If you go underground, you kind of just find roots. I'm pretty sure there's probably roots on the walls underground there. I could be wrong, so it kind of makes sense. But it could be it could be a nice way to like instead of going to the Tower of Life to farm red spider eggs, you just put Seracnus stuff in there and then you uh you can harvest red spider eggs. It could be cool. It could be something easy and simple. When like they it. implemented Seiya and the farming skill. guild, right here on this yep. spot, I'm gonna edit that later in, don't pay attention, was supposed to come player owned farms, our version of that. They had everything planned out and then nothing came of it. So, Damn, so there's that. that. Sucks. The That's final cool argument idea. against this would be that it just becomes another daily scape and we definitely don't want that. I mean, look at RuneScape 3. The game basically revolves around the 24 hour clock or the weekly clock or even the monthly one. We have birdhouse runs, we have herb runs. That's good enough. Next up, we have Druidism, which essentially allows you to turn into multiple different variations of monsters in Kilenor. It's meant to be a support role and it's supposed to have a different meaning to combat than we currently have. For instance, let's say you get a certain druidic level, you can turn into a vampire. You can't use normal items, you can't use your inventory, but let's say in the middle of the raid you can heal your teammates to full. After 15 seconds you turn back to a human being and this concept can be added to basically any monster in the game. The creator of this concept gave examples like blood wells, you can suck life out of your enemies and gain that back as HP, you can turn into a snail that leaves a trail of healing liquid behind as you move and it also works as a poison against enemies. There's a lot of different monsters you can turn yourself into that give benefits but you lose access to your normal inventory. To use the spell you need a pouch which requires a beast ingredient, druidic pouch and some shards. So in a sense it's a very similar concept to summoning but instead of summoning monsters for you, you instead turn into those monsters. So if you remember we had like 50 different monsters in the original skill? summoning skill and you yourself can turn into all of those things now and cast special attacks and abilities. 
it has the spirit of summoning, but it has a new concepts like shape shifting. New yeah, until you're in Varrock and some just big ass like bear walks past you, you'd be like, "What the is that?" That's a kind of cool idea. Good or risky? I don't know what the correct word is because um, they're turning into blood belt aids. That I, I I think my internet is garbage. I think. Um, I don't know. That's a very interesting concept. I've never liked the idea of adding another combat style purely because I think the combat system in the game works really well already. I think it's already well balanced. Um, I don't know. That's an interesting one. I've not heard of that yet. I want to listen to it again if you don't mind. Sorry. Lenore. It's meant to be a support role and it's supposed to have a different meaning to combat than we currently have. Okay. For instance, let's say you get a certain druidic level. You can turn into a vampire. Yeah. You can't use normal items, you can't use your inventory, but let's say in the middle of the raid you can heal your teammates to full. See, After a problem with something like that is, while that sounds all well and good, the problem with a concept like healing your teammates mid-raid is... Can someone heal my internet? <laughs> the amount of complaining about my internet in this video is going to be bananas. Um, the, the problem is... Anyone else like, YES I'M LAGGING! I KNOW YOU CAN'T! SHUT UP! Um, yeah, so... Fuck, Shane fucking shit tits is throwing me off here. So... The problem with an idea like, this is just one part of the, the skill, like healing everyone else in the raid. The problem is, you don't need to do that. Like, you have a heal, love a spell in Lunar Spellbook, guess how many places it's used? One, and that's to troll people using Dark Axes at the Giant Mole. You don't really need to heal teammates because you have concepts like Bruise, you have um, Overhealing from Anglerfish. So, um, a lot of ideas that people come up with, like being able to support teammates in, in raids and bossing, kind of falls flat but being based on the fact that they're not even needed already. So adding that, you're adding a need to something that isn't a need. Does that make sense? Like you're adding support to, to raids when people are already doing 20, 20, there's like a 26 minute solo CM now. Or 24 minute solo CM. Like you don't need this sort of support, yeah, that that's a you know a heavy amount of game, you know that's incredibly skillful um, CM time. But like for your average three man team in Cox, why would you why would you take this druidic skill into there to, to heal teammates or support teammates when you're already smashing it at an excessive rate? It maybe it wasn't healing instead ability to give damage or yeah things like that. Well, th I mean this is just going off of the example like this. Like so, there's a lot of ideas that are kind of going to come up like this not just by healing your teammates, but there's going to be other combat-related ideas that aren't really... You're, you're adding an idea to something that doesn't need that support, you know? Sounds like... It sounds out of place. Um, it, I, like, t transforming into monsters, well, if it's only for a certain amount of time, yes, but would be OP for making it through Deathless, but also an anchor on, on times, but just generally OP. Yeah, I mean, the idea of doing, like, a duo top without a scythe would become... If you can get a buff to damage would be like just an exa as an example would be great but it would be overpowered but then you have three a three man tob and you take in someone who can buff people's damage or, or heal people you just it, it removes the the challenge from tob you make it too easy i feel like there isn't a necessary there, there isn't a need for this concept and if they wanted to add this and bring a need for it they would have to add a lot of content and kind of change the dynamic of end game content quite a lot because people are doing 500 invocation raids without this. People are doing 400 invocation raids comfortably at a mass without this. Um, without this sort of support, at least. Again, this isn't purely based off of just healing your teammates in a raid. This is a supporting raids by transforming into like just a, a bear and then you, you just whack everyone off and everyone's morality is increased. Like People are already smashing content. Does existing skill overhaul count as a new skill? No. Why would you want a teammate doing zero DPS to be essentially an AOE brew? Well, if you're in Bubba, that might help. I don't know. If 
finding a problem for the solution. But that's what you've got to do, right? You've you've got to, yeah, you, you've got to you've you've got to find you've got to look at this stuff objectively and you have to look at where it can be used and you have to look at the negatives to things like this. The negative to this is it could honestly it sounds like it's it's not needed. It sounds like it's in a way useless. So I feel about summoning on OSRS. You're never going to get summoning in old school Inkscape. I wouldn't worry about it. Ignore that possibility. It won't happen. I'm pretty sure they said they don't want to draw inspiration from RS3 skills, so it's not going to happen. The more I listen to you and watch these videos, the more worried I'm becoming about the new skill. Why? What, what, what have I said? If they took this idea as is, would they have to make some content harder to make it more relevant? Yeah, you'd have to bring out like a new raid, for example, or a boss, a group boss, to fit this style of, of content. Otherwise, you, you're not going to take this into TOA unless it completely breaks the raid and then it would just ruin the raid, right? It would just break endgame, pretty much. Can you turn back to a human being and this concept can be added to basically any monster in the game. The creator of this concept gave examples like blood wells, you can suck life out of your enemies and I mean, you've got you've got blood furies, you've got sang staffs, you've got blood blitz and barrage and burst and you know. Players take the form of a snail, leaving a trail of healing liquid behind them as they move. The liquid also poisons foes. See, the thing is, where would you use that? There's one place you could use that. That wouldn't be super broken, and that is in Ulm. And if you do the dolo method with your teammates all on the same tile, the same line, you're just a snail fucking yeeting it across the room and everyone's just running on your on your, your, your little cum trail. But then you're just losing damage. And you don't really need that much health. Uh, you don't really need that, that much help, I guess, with, with HP in on because you've got sang stuff. Really, you'd just be taking longer on the raid. Uh, sorry, I'm just watching my internet constantly drop. I do apologize, guys. Uh, player taking the form of an undead druid, which specializes in chaos druid spells and binds. Where would... <laughs> yes, but where... I mean, I don't know where I would use that. I really don't. And then you've got player taking the form of a reanimated hellhound, which spe specializes in buffing allies' defenses. The problem is, in, we, we play a game called RuneScape, and RuneScape, the current meta is DPS, attack speed, and accuracy. Defense doesn't really matter. Where are you tanking? There's only maybe two places where it would matter, which would be like Bubba in TOA and the Nightmare. Other than that, tanking is kind of like... Even then, Nightmare tanking, everyone shares the damage anyway. It's just the melee attack. Uh, next... Kind of a unnecessary. Jesus Christ, man. Come on. Are we good? Are we back? What a joke. Hey. We back? Yeah, for a second. What an absolute joke. That that is that is just fucking disgusting. It is 2023 and you cannot get a stable internet connection. You are kidding. Eight, like like eighty percent of the viewers have probably just been redirected to a completely different um video now, like they've been pushed off the stream. I finally apologize for being a Twitch viewer. That's your own fault, dude. Don't apologize. Man up. Uh, also, line around uh, the Discord link is in the other um, is in the YouTube chat. Sorry, tanking matters a little in PvP. No, if tanking mattered in PvP, people wouldn't make pures. <laughs> if people if tanking mattered that much, I guess running away from PKs it would help. But you're not going to have someone in, in as a reanimated hellhound following you around to buff you, are they? It's not Elon Musk internet. It's Telstra. King can't get good Wi-Fi in Australia, but they can FaceTime from a rocket up in space, my ass. It's just, yeah, it's just a fucking joke, man. It's like the, the internet apparently cut out because, you know, it's opened a whole new web browser for me. I apologize for that, guys. I am sorry. 
We're back though now, yeah? Everyone can see everything? We're good? We can continue the video? As I was saying before, it, it lagged out. Um, I don't actually remember what I was saying. It was something along the lines of... Me, I, I went through all four of these examples here and I found flaws. I found holes in what... I, I found no use for them, essentially. Depending on what you're doing, tanking can matter a lot, especially for uh, lasting, but also fuck that A for PvP. Well, that's the thing, right? Because the idea of this is to, to buff allies. So you would have someone following you as a reanimated hellhound to, to buff you in PvP. It, it's just not happening. It, it, it's not something that's going to happen. Um, but the, the, the ideas here, are, are that they won't work. The player will gain several buffs in certain areas for transformative states while debuffs in others. Players won't be able to use their own items in this state other than food and prayers. So I think people who are making these concepts are putting a lot of, a lot of work into it. But like, I, I, I don't know about you, but if I was... I'm, I'm basically going to shit on the guy that made this druid concept. If I was going to make this concept, this druid concept, an idea, if I was sitting here making this right now in Photoshop, the thought would cross my mind a thousand times going, this is completely useless. Where are you actually going to use a snail? Where are you actually going to use the blood veld? Where are you going to actually use this? Where are you going to actually use the hellhound? Like, like, I feel like the person who made this hasn't played the game because these the ideas don't work. It's a cool idea, but it doesn't work in Old School RuneScape. It really doesn't. How would it determine your allies when you're not in a raid? Probably through a CC. I don't know. It just, it, it does not work. It's a cool idea, but this is not needed because there's no need for the concept of healing teammates. Otherwise, you know, heal other would be a useful spell. This, none of these ideas work. It, like, where are you going to use this snail where people can run in the trail of your snail to heal themselves? You have overhealing, you have brews, you have like you have the ability to, to, to eat a fish, drink the brew, and then eat the carambran in one game tick. It's it's unnecessary, I think. At this point, the way the game is, unless they release a whole new raid or concept of combat, which will then completely just change the end game, it's not gonna work. You can suck life out of your enemies and gain that back as HP. You can turn into a snail that leaves a trail of healing liquid behind as you move and it also works as a poison against enemies. There's a lot of different monsters you can turn yourself into that give benefits but you lose access to your normal inventory. To use the spell you need a pouch which requires a beast ingredient, druidic pouch and some shards. So in a sense it's a very similar concept to summoning but instead of summoning monsters for you, you instead turn into those monsters. So if you remember we had like 50 different monsters in the original summoning skill and you yourself can turn into all of those things now and cast special attacks and abilities. It has the spirit of summoning, but it adds new concepts yeah, like shapeshifting, new spellbooks, and so on. And this clue scroll also has a third age in it. Nope, never mind. And lastly, we have archaeology. This is pretty much copy one to one from RuneScape 3. And I, I, like it. I had a chance I to dry cool. it out myself. I drained my archaeology from one to like 50. And I must say, I really enjoyed it. It has a very simple concept of finding treasure and turning that into either experience or valuable loot. And that's why I think it will work really well with old school RuneScape because on the surface level, it's so simple skill. Everyone can get into this. But once you get higher levels, it starts to get more complex and the benefits start to get bigger. I'm not gonna go deeply into the skill because it's been out for multiple years now But if you want to dwell deeper, you can literally try it out yourself I highly recommend it was one of the few things that I actually enjoyed about the game I when think I it's actually it. one now, of the skills in RS3 that has received a lot of positive Feedback as well. Like if you ask anyone that plays RS3 uh, Be sure to tell them the game's dog shit because they hate it But also I think this skill and invention are the two skills that RS3 players really like stand by as good skills that have been added to the game that are worth doing and i, I think the idea of this it's mostly a law based skill as well uh, so it would actually it would technically work with old school runescape um to a certain extent but the idea behind it i thought was great when i was doing it
There are a Is it lot of other cool ideas know. as well, and I'll leave the link in the description for you to check those out. But before we end off, I'll throw in my two cents to the new skill as well. Okay. And I have it very, very simple. It's straightforward, it's not very big, and it satisfies in a way everyone. So here is my idea how to develop a skill in old school runescape. I present to you the Ben is system, or as I like to call it, powerfully evolving, nonchalant, interesting Penis. skill. I like it. Now, first of all, this is very serious. I don't want anyone to make fun of this. We're here to learn. Secondly, how does Ben is work? Like I said, the idea itself is not very big, but it's supposed to satisfy everyone. You want that trust to make sure it's clean, it's coordinated, it works. I don't like when my skill ideas are just dangling there, it has to be erect. So here are some pointers on how to get pen is to work. Firstly, you have to make sure to not get so ambitious with the idea that it's almost impossible to implement. Like I said before, yes, it would be fun to see sailing in game, but I just don't see Jagex having the engine work to make that happen. Yeah, they I have mean, the we work sometimes need months of engine work to get simple quality of life changes. Making an entire skill from scratch and working with the rest of the game is a tall task. Less is oftentimes more. Secondly, please don't make another skill where I have to do thousands Stop. of laps of rooftops or construct Sit. oak tables for hundreds of hours. That's just not fun. And finally, although minigames are awesome, I hope to God we don't see the new skill as a minigame. Yes, it saved fire making with winter dot. Yes, it saved fishing with temperance. And yes, it saved room crafting with gardens of the rift. But that also meant those skills were dead on release. And that's the only reason. Oh, no, those, those skills weren't dead on release. I don't think they, I don't think gardens of the rift has saved room crafting. I think it made it better. I would say Zaya Runecrafting probably made, made Runecrafting more bearable. Um, people still barbarian fish to this day, but how many people do you find lighting fires around the Grand Exchange? Not a whole lot as you're used to. So I would say Winter Todd is the one, the one mini game that made a skill, but basically re rebooted a skill. Um, I think having a mini game or, or a boss to, to level a skill is totally fine. I don't think that's a problem, but I think having a, a skill that is a minigame like sailing or the idea of dungeoneering is a bad idea. And I, I think it is better implemented just as a concept into the game. So, um, yeah, that's my two cents on that take. Those minigames exist. Actual meaningful training methods are the way to go. If I had to choose one skill to be an example out of the 23 we have, I think farming is a good building stone. Did I not say farming earlier? I said farming. This guy, this guy, he has some, he has, he has some brain power. He's got, some, he's got some big old wrinkle brain energy. Because you gain experience through hundreds of different meaningful ways. You yes. can plant trees, you can plant herbs, bushes, whatever you want. You can do contracts, you can fight farming bosses. It's fun and you don't have to sit there for 10 hours clicking on the same thing over and over again. Whatever happens though, at the end of the day, we have to keep in mind that literally none of the skills we currently have in the game would pass the 70% threshold to pass. So take everything you see with a grain of salt, because like I said at the beginning of the video, this new skill will literally change everything we know about the game. I love you all for now and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Please consider subscribing to the channel and like the video to support me and this channel. Okay, I, um, I want now. to apologize mm -hmm. formally. What the fuck? Was that a kiss at the end there? Hell yeah. I, I want to apologize formally to everyone watching right now, everyone that was watching and probably- All right. Shut up. Dragonfly. Shut up. Um, and everyone you know, that was th watching the video as well, I'm going to drop a subscribe and a like here and put the link in the chat for those who wanted to see it because I didn't mind that video. That was actually really good. And he's got a bit of a wrinkle brain going on there. Um, but I just want to apologize for the way my internet was behaving halfway through that. I'm probably going to cut it out of the video best I can. Uh, but that was shocking, uh, the performance. I do apologize. However, comma, I think, as I've said again numerous times, the, the, the consistent viewers here, you guys know what I'm about to say. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, god damn. Fuck, mate, look at that boy. It's huge. You got a big boy.